Learn how to open up an Etsy shop and create digital art that you can start selling. I'll show you everything easy and beginner friendly step by step. Plus realistic results that you maybe can expect if you are a beginner like me. And just to get it out of the way, you will not make thousands of dollars. Probably not even hundreds, unless you pick a great niche or you are lucky or have a hand for it, unlike me. But you can definitely start building up a small income stream that you can slowly grow over time if you put in the work and effort. And I think that's pretty cool. But let's get into how to sell AI art on Etsy right now. We will be using Midjourney to create our art for Etsy. Now Midjourney has a subscription that costs a little bit of money. I will show you free tools that you can use later on. But for this tutorial, we will be using Midjourney. Now, in order to join Midjourney, you need a Discord account. For that, you go to discord.com and then join Discord. I already made an in-depth video about how to create a Discord account and how to join Midjourney, and I'll link to that above here. But once you've got your Discord account, you can go to midjourney.com and you will find all of the links in the description down below. And then you click just on join the beta right here. It will automatically redirect you to Discord. So you just click on accept invite and then you'll be redirected to the Midjourney server. And once you're in here, there at the sidebar on the left, you want to scroll down until you find a newbies channel. Then you join that newbies channel and in there, you just type into the chat bar slash subscribe. Then you just find your message and from there you click on open subscription page and it brings you here and there you can see Midjourney's different plans. Now you can join the basic plan for 10 bucks a month. That basically gives you commercial rights, which is what you need to sell your images on Etsy. This $10 is basically all you gotta pay if you use Midjourney. I'll also show you what free alternatives you can use. But yeah, I think Midjourney just gives the cleanest and best art. And for $30 you get unlimited generations. Now let's have a brief look at Blue Willow, which is a free mid-journey alternative, also works on Discord. You just go to bluewillow.ai, link in the description, and then you click here on the top right on join the free beta. It just works like mid-journey, you will be redirected into the Discord and there you can start using Blue Willow for free. And you go to the menu to the left again, click on one of the rookie rooms and in there you can start creating your images. Just type slash imagine, just like for mid-journey. I'll scroll through a couple of images so you can see the art. And with Blue Willow you have full commercial usage rights so you can sell the art that you create on Etsy. Another free alternative that you can use is Leonardo. For that you go to leonardo.ai and here you can click on get early access but I found that this is not necessary when you have a Google account, but test it for yourself. So you just click here on the right on launch app and there you click on yes, I am whitelisted and then you just click on log in with your Google account. So let's do that real quick. And here you are on Leonardo. Now it has a bit of a different interface because it's not in Discord, it's its own website. If I made a tutorial already, you will find it up there. But for now you just click on AI image generation down here and then you get here where you can start generating your images. And I'll just scroll through a couple of images that I generated. For Leonardo as well, you got commercial usage rights, so everything that you generate, you can sell on Etsy. Good, now let's go over to Etsy.com and let's research our niche that we want to sell something in. So of course we want digital downloads. So let's just type that into the search bar digital art and see what it gives us. And here you get a few more ideas for other keywords that you could type into the search bar. And you can also scroll down as well and look at what digital downloads are there. I really say take your time here to really research your niche and pick the right one. So let's continue our research and if you click in here, the blue numbers that I've got there, that's from Sales Samurai, an extension that I'm currently using. There are basically two main extensions, Sales Samurai and Everbee, but we'll ignore that for now uh, and I'll come back to them later in case you might want to use them. But for now we just look at what other words Etsy gives us. So for example, Digital Art Prints, Digital Art Prints AI, Digital Art Download and things like that. Let's click on digital art prints for now. And again, when it has loaded, you can scroll down here and look at other things and you want to pick a niche that is selling. For that, let's look at the small number right next to the stars here. For example, here are two that are the sales that this shop got. 
So you want to find a shop that is selling already with things that you want to create as well. So you can model yourself a bit after that shop and use keywords. So we'll just find something that we like. Then we open that in a new tab and then we continue scrolling and look for a few more things. This here as well, 2.8k sales, that's very good. So let's also open that in a new tab and maybe one more. So you can see here, for example, with single pictures like this one, the whole shop only got 10 sales. So we might want to focus on bundles. But yeah, if you scroll through here and don't find anything that you like or you want to niche down further, let's go back to the search bar and then you can see other words that are completing the digital arts. So let's go to digital art print landscape and see what we can find in here. Actually, the first one looks good, so let's open that in a new tab as well. I highly recommend that you take much more time than I did here. I just want to show you how you would go about it. You take a little bit more time to really find out what niche you want to create in, what sells, how it's usually presented. But we now go to the open tabs and look at our titles and keywords that we want to use. Okay, you see it's a thousand plus printable vintage arts. So that's really a lot, but you can do that when you put out like five, 10 at a time, then you just bundle them all together at one point. But yeah, see here we have vintage art, electric gallery set. Let's look at the shop here. Okay, the shop sells digital downloads. That's good, 92 and a lot of sales for that. Not too bad. If you want to see what's currently selling for the shop, you can just click on the stars here. Some shops don't allow it, this one does. So you can just see here the sales history. And yeah, actually the bundles are selling quite well. That's always a good indicator of what you might want to create as well. And I already said bundles. So let's look at the next tab here, the next thing we saved. Mid-century art prints. Okay, let's also look at the shop here. That's also a bundle. All right, soft and soft. And here you can see the different arts that the shop sells here. Yeah. Definitely something we can create with Mid-Journey as well. Moving on to the next one. Of course, you would do that more in depth. Vintage French Country gallery, wall art, okay, vintage again, also set again. Okay, let's just pick the example niche vintage wall art for now. Of course, you will take a little bit more time in picking your niche. The main thing that I want you to take away and that I just found out is that sets and bundles seem to sell pretty well in that niche and that there seems to be a demand for vintage wall art. So let's move forward with that niche and I'll show you how to create art in mid-journey. I'll only create one picture here. Of course, you create more when you start niching down and making your products, but the process is exactly the same. Okay, let's create our first picture. If you want a full in-depth tutorial about how to use mid-journey, I'll link that here above. But for now, let's just type slash imagine. And then just something very, very simple. Let's just type, uh, actually, let's just type vintage art dash dash aspect ratio 16 by 9. And then let's look at version 5 and version 5.1, how they both compare. And again, to learn what I'm doing here, watch the full tutorial. That's a bit much for this video here. Good, here we got our finished pictures. <laughs> of course, very random because we just said vintage art. Okay, not so sure about version 5, but version 5.1. I think especially the one on the bottom left could be very interesting. But they all look interesting. Of course, you can also create something specific. Obviously, you need your ideas for that yourself. Maybe look at what sells the best. But for now, let's just create something like Let's say let's just create vintage art of yellow flowers. And let's compare version 5 and 5.1 again. And we just learned that we rather want to create something like bundles because bundles seem to sell pretty well. I will just create one image here. So you learn the process on how to create that, how to create a thumbnail for that, how to make a listing with that. But 
for you yourself, you of course make it a little bit better uh, and a bit more beautiful. Here we go with our different pictures. And I think version 5 doesn't look too good. Maybe the one here on the bottom right, that could be good for vintage. <laughs> Not so sure, but let's just upscale that and use that picture. And here now the important thing when it comes to upscaling. Of course, you click on U4, U4 to upscale the picture, but then you want to get it as big as possible for whatever program you're using. For mid-journey now, you click down there on Web. And that brings you to the web page of Midjourney. Here, of course, you make right click, picture save as. For me, it's in German. For you, it will probably be in uh, your language, hopefully. And here, it just has a way higher resolution uh, than if you would download it in the app. But not high enough yet. So we go over to another website called TinyWow. And here, you can upscale images for free. So here you just drag and drop your image in there. And once that's uploaded, you can upscale it down here, either two times or four times. Now, two times is generally okay for almost everything. Four times sometimes can give you artifacts and doesn't look that well anymore. I'll upscale four times here. I think for that image, it's okay. And for wall art, you probably want to generally upscale four times most of the time so that it looks good when it's printed. But definitely look at every image that you upscale uh, close up 100% so you see if there are any things that you maybe didn't want to have in there so you can ensure good quality. With our upscaled image now, let's head over to Canva and create our thumbnail and listing picture. You click on custom size. 2500 by 2000 pixels is, I think, just thumbnail for Etsy. And then we just drag and drop our image in here. And when that's done, you click up here on Edit Image. And then we want to go to Smart Mockups. If you don't find it right here, you just scroll down here until you see it. Um, there it is. Just click on See All and then you find something that works for you. Let's scroll down here to something like posters. And ideally you create multiple images for your customers so they can imagine how it would look like for them. Um, let's, let's pick this one here. And then as you can see, Canva's automatically putting that picture in the mockup that you chose. And once you got that, you just Fill up the whole screen with it, so you just adjust the edges. And what I like to do is I like to fill it out even more, because the main thing is that our picture is visible, right? The other stuff doesn't matter that much, we don't need to see the wall, also the stuff at the bottom is nice, it gives a nice flair, but we want to have our picture very visible. So you just drag it out even more, as much as you can, so that it still looks good and the picture is clearly visible. And now we can save that and start setting up our Etsy shop. And for that, I recommend that you use my link that you can find in the pinned comment and in the description. Because as you can see here, with my link, you get your first 40 listings, your first 40 items completely for free. Usually it costs 20 cents, but with this link you can put up your first 40 listings for free without any cost at all. This is only valid if you have not started setting up your shop yet. If you started setting up your shop, uh, if you had any step in the way, <laughs> you need to abandon that. Uh, but then you can click on open a shop today right here and let's start setting up our shop. Right, and for that you can use either Google, Facebook, you can also continue with Apple, or you can use your own email address and create a completely new account. Uh, for the sake of the time here, I will continue with Google and use my Google account for that. Good, and that redirects us to this page here where we really just have to follow the instructions. So let's do this. And then just guide you through a couple of questions. What brings you to Etsy? Let's see, doesn't really matter. 
So let's just say I'm just starting to serve for the first time ever. Uh, you can also skip the questions if you want down here. Uh, here, if there's anything you would like help with, look through that. Etsy sends kind of helpful emails sometimes, especially like for getting discovered, things like that. But since I'm already getting some emails, I'll also just skip that down here. And now it's time for the fun part. So let's click on start your shop. And that brings us right here where you fill out our details. So you select your language, the country you live in. <laughs> I'm Germany, of course, as you probably can tell by now <laughs> uh, with my accent. Well, then we just click on save and continue, shop name. Let's just say, I <laughs> already typed a few. So let's just say this one here, test shop X, one, two, three, four, five. And there we go. Go, of course, you come up with a better name than this one. I will hope so. And then we get here where we need to create our first listing in order to set up our shop. So let's do that now. And here we add our photo that we just created. And again, you create multiple mock ups. You probably also have a set of multiple photos or whatever niche you choose. And you put it all in there, display it beautifully so your customer buys it. Okay, I'll just do that real quick to show you the process here and how you would do it. So again, you upload your photo right here. And down here you can choose your thumbnail. Of course, we just have one picture, so that's our thumbnail. You can also add a video if you want to. And then scrolling down further here, you can add your title. We'll get back to that in just a moment because we'll need to do some research here. But let's take care of the other things for now first. So down here about this listing. I made it, it's a finished product, and I made it in 2023. Then your category, you can just type in here. Let's type in digital downloads. And yeah, let's then just choose here digital downloads and digital print. Primary color, that's already not that important. Let's just choose yellow over here then dimensions, a bunch of other stuff. You can fill that out if you want to. It's not really that important. So I'll just leave that room you put it in. Yeah, again, this is also not that important. Now down here, you can see the renewal options, automatic or manual. It will always renew once you sold a listing and every new renewing costs you 20 cents. Of course, when you sell it, it doesn't matter that much. Here you click on digital because it's a digital product. The description, we'll get back to the description in just a moment as well. Here you have the tags, which is the next very important thing. And we'll look at that when we research the title. And down here you can set the price. I would always start with a low price, especially when you just open your shop. Let's just put 497. <laughs> Whoops, it doesn't really matter. But you start with a low price just so you start making sales and hopefully get reviews and tell Etsy, hey, I have good products. You can always change your price. Here you upload the digital file. Important, not the thumbnail or anything, but the file that we upscaled in TinyWow. This is what we upload over here. And this is what your customer gets. Now, if you have multiple products, you can upload up to five files, but you can also upload zip folders. So if you have multiple ones, you can just upload them in zip folders over here. All right, and these are basically the most important things for now. Now let's get to the title and the tags and how you do research for title and tags, because this is the number one factor well, maybe aside from your listing photo and how beautiful this is, this is the number one factor that determines if your product sells. Because without a good title and without good tags, no one will be able to find it in Etsy. All right, first we go back to the old listings that we looked at, and then we want to copy the titles or the words in the titles that are relevant for us. And we do that and put them all in a new document right here. All right, what else? Not so sure about the electric thing, but definitely wall decor. So let's copy that as well. Okay, and when you come back here, the next thing you want to do is scroll all the way down. 
you want to scroll all the way down to the bottom and down here you find these keywords and you want to copy all of these search terms as well into the document. So let me just do that real quick one by one. And keep in mind what we are doing here is a free way, how you can easily find free keywords without paying anything. I'll show you how to use Sales Samurai and Everbee to find even better keywords in just a moment, but this is how you would go about it for free. All right, and once we've done that, we can do the exact same thing with our other listings that we found, but even better, let's type into search now our product and see if there are any other listings that are similar to our product. So let's type into search vintage yellow flowers digital download. Okay, having a quick glance over them, it looks like there are a few vintage yellow flowers. This is already good, that means the product is selling. Now, when we scroll all the way up here again, for our keyword research, we want to ignore the top ones here because these are ads, as you can see here. And these are the ones that are ranking the highest. And of course, we want to use the keywords and titles or we want to be inspired by the keywords and titles of the products that rank the highest. So let's open them. And then again, we copy the title up here, paste that into our document. And we go back, scroll all the way down to find the keywords down here and copy and paste them as well again. <laughs> okay, just a quick speed run there. So going up again, one other thing that you can do is look at their listing photos. And if you look at the different pictures here, well, it's basically all the same. You can definitely create something better <laughs> than that. And this is one of the highest ranking products. So that should give you hope for creating something good. Let's go to the next one. Again, we copy the title, everything that is relevant for us. And of course, scroll down and copy all the search terms from down there again into our document. And I'll speed that up again. And now that we have done that, let's create a title out of all of this that fits our product the best. So let's say yellow flower wall art vintage decor floral spring flowers <laughs> seems a bit double uh, but you definitely want to get these keywords in there and then let's see what else do we have here and everything that we researched what else could fit well the thing is everything that we have here already ranked in the highest listing products so we can use it very well so let's also use digital file print and instant download and what else can we use for our title you have i think 140 characters we'll look at that in just a moment you want to use all of them if you can warm colors let's also use that and whatever let's also use electric yellow painting all right nice couple of keywords now let's take care of our tags and for that we have all the text down there and let's use the ones that are most relevant to our product so starting with these ones up here then let's also use home decor and let's also use I think these ones are all good, so let's also use them. And what else? These two here, electric wall art and vintage yellow art. And what else do we have? Living room art, digital DIY art, why not? Sounds okay, we didn't get this keyword yet. And let's take this as well. And for Etsy, you can have 13 keywords. So let's count how many we have now. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Okay, perfect. Then we are basically done with our title and our text. So we copy that now, go over to Etsy, paste it in, and it fits perfectly.
And as you can see here, you can have 140 characters. So you want to use that space as good as you can. Now, one small tip is if you have a small keyword here that you want to fit, let's say DIY, but it doesn't quite fit, then just delete the space here between the commas and you can fit a little bit more. Um, but we don't need that here, so let's leave that for now. Now we go to our tags and we just copy them. They are already separated with commas, so we just need to paste them in down here. Click on add and there they are. All 13 tags. Now let's look out our description for a moment. And for that again you look at what your competitor put into their description. Of course you don't want to copy that, <laughs> definitely don't do that, but you want to see what they are generally writing so you can write something similar. Now you definitely need the aspect ratios in here as you can see the different sizes. They have that in here. This is something you can potentially just copy if you use the same, which is probably is. Let's look at the other one. And yes, they also have the ratios in here. So yeah, this is something you definitely want to have in your description as well. And then aside from that, you just look what other stuff they write. So ideally you make yourself a default description that you can just copy and paste. So you just need to do it once and then you just change a few numbers. So first I would make a brief description of the product with keywords and things. This does not directly help you to rank in Etsy SEO. Um, or for the most part it doesn't. Etsy said that the first few lines maybe have a little bit of an impact, but like it's comp uh, very, very small, neglectably small compared to text and the title. But you still want to have like just a brief description also for your customer. Then I would say next you want to have the details about the product, all the important things and details. And this includes file type, file sizes and things like that. The things that you potentially can just copy and paste from your competitors. And then after that you maybe also want a brief description on how the whole downloading process works for people who maybe have never done that. As that's something you should also be able to find in your competitors' descriptions. And again, of course, always use your own words and then you can add whatever you want. All right, and that was basically it. Now let's look at how we would do the keyword and title research with Sales Samurai. Sales Samurai and Everbee are the two big tools that most people are using. I'll show you both of them. In my opinion, Everbee is a bit better, but Sales Samurai is cheaper. So if you decide you want to sign up for one of these plans, for one of these programs, you can use my links in the description down below and you will get a discount. Of course, these are affiliate links, so I'll get a small commission, but since you'll get a discount, we all win. So with Sales Samurai, you can click here on search and you can make a basic search or search for a single listing. So let's make a basic search first and just type in yellow flower vintage digital print and see what it gives us. And here you see the basic stats for the keyword. If Sales Samurai can pull any, so you see the volume, the sales volume, the clicks rate, competition, things like that. And down here you see similar keywords and the same stats. Sales volume, clicks through rate, and you can also sort by that. So that can be very helpful in finding keywords that you might want to go for, that you want, might want to create products for, or that you want to use for your listings. And when you go up here again, and then you click on single listing, you can copy and paste the address of a listing that you found. So let's do that. And there you see the information of that listing. You see here the title count, not really optimized. And down here you see the quantity. So you can make a maximum of 999. That tells me that probably it made 10 sales so far. Not for sure, but probably. And then you see the price and other things. And when you scroll down here, you see all the keywords that this listing used. So you can use keywords that you like for yourself, or you can just copy them all if you want. But I definitely look at these keywords when using Sales Samurai to create my own listings. 
And again, here you also see the sales volume and the click-through rate on Etsy for that particular keyword. Okay, going back to Etsy. Now when we type something in here, let's just say something like digital print vintage. You can see how much searches there are on Etsy, so 15. And there on the right, you also see 500 more. If you click on 500 more, Sales Samurai shows you 500 similar search terms and keywords that you could maybe create products in that you can use for yourself with sales volume and with number of listings that are on Etsy. And of course, you can also sort by that here. And then you can sort, for example, by competition and hopefully find something that has low competition and a high search volume. Okay, but let's try another one. Um, let's say vintage ditch, uh, no, let's say wall art. And here you can see immediately the search volume for the different suggestions. So now let's click on 500 more for printables over here. And as you can see, the keyword it shows you are not that great again. Uh, but sometimes they are pretty good ones. Sometimes it shows you good niches where you could create something in, but you have to dig a little bit. Um, my internet is kind of slow at the moment, so it's loading pretty slow, but I think you get the idea of it. And that's how you would do product and keyword research with Sales Samurai. That's basically all. You can do other things here like add competitors and things like that, but I don't think these things are put particularly useful. The main things are really the keyword research and the tag and listings research. Now let's have a look at Everbee. And Everbee is a Chrome extension. So let's connect Everbee to our shop here and then download it for our browser. So you just click up here on the yellow line, <laughs> use your Chrome extension now. And I'll just set that all up real quick. And now on Etsy, you'll see on the left side the Everbee extension that you can use. If you type something in, you get the Etsy suggestions. Now, keep in mind, I'm using the free version of Everbee here. I used the paid one before, and now I'm using Sales Samurai because I wanted to test both of them. Again, I think Ed's, um, Everbee is a little bit better. But now the free version of Everbee just shows you the first three suggestions of what you type into the search bar here, um, the search volume of the first three suggestions. If we go back to our yellow flower vintage art, we can click on one of those now here. And when we are in there, what we can do now with Everbee is we can click here on Analyze Listing. And again, with the paid version, of course, you see a lot more. But with the free version, as you can see on top here, you get 10 free searches. So nine are left now. And you can see here the estimated monthly sales, which is very cool. And you can see here the time it's already listed, the estimated revenue, and the total sales, which is something you cannot do like this in Sales Samurai. Now with the free version, you get three keywords here that they used. Of course, you get all <laughs> with the paid version. And up there on top, you can copy all of them at once if you click here. And then, yeah, just use them for yourself. But I think for the free version, this is also pretty good already. Get a few keywords. You see how often it sold. You can see the total revenue. So I think that's pretty handy if you want to create your own listings. Now, if we go here back to the site, you can do also things like keyword research. So let's click on that. And you can also type in your keyword here, pretty similar to Sales Samurai. And um, of course, I just used the paid version of Sales Samurai, and now I'm using the free version of Everbee. So here, you are just going to see like three keywords, search volume, competition, and yeah, that's it with the free version. I'm actually not quite sure at the moment how the free version of Sales Samurai would look like. That's something you have to find out if you want to use it. But yes, that's basically how you would do keyword research and product research with Sales Samurai and Everbee. Like I said, I think Everbee is a bit better, Sales Samurai is a bit cheaper. 
If you want to use it, you can use my links in the description, get a discount, but you can also do free keyword research like I showed you. So let's go back to our listing. And we are pretty much done here. So we just click on save and continue and we continue setting up our Etsy shop. Great job on your first listing, right? Thank you. Okay, but we don't want to set up other listings right now. So here, if you want to, you can immediately add more listings, but we don't need that right now. So we just click on do this later. And here now you can type in your payment information and all these kinds of things. Once you've done that, you also click on save and continue down there and continue setting up your shop. Now I will not do this <laughs> right now because I have a shop already and I don't want to type in all my information here now. So I'll just jump over in my existing shop and show you what's important to, to see and to use in there. And here we are, the first that you'll see is your dashboard and here you can basically see all the important and relevant information for yourself. So here you see your views, your visits, orders, your revenue. If you scroll a little bit further down, you see like shop advisor stuff, activities here, um, someone favorite, favorited my listing, your active listings and all those kinds of things. And then here at the left sidebar, you can see all the other things that you can do, like marketing, finances, stats, star seller, messages, and things like that. Now, what is important is when you click on listings, there you can add a new listing to your shop. So I'll show you how to do that in your shop real quick. And over here, you want to click on add listing up there on the top right. And once you've done that, you can add your new listing. And the menu is a little bit different from when you are setting it up. So here you can see it, uh, it's still basically the same. So title, you add photos, but important when you scroll down here to the core details, you wanna click on add core details. And then here you can pick that as a digital file and not a physical product. Then it's the same, I did make it, it's a finished product. I did make it in 2023, then you apply that. And now you need to scroll up here again. And then up here, you can now add here your digital file. So whatever is supposed to go to the customer comes in here. Good, that's basically it for making a new product, a new listing. Now, the next thing I wanted to show you over here is there at the site, if you click on marketing. That's something you definitely should do and should use. And here you click on sales and discounts and running a sale will basically get you easier notice on Etsy because there's like a huge green number that will make customers see your listing easier. So you click on run a sale and then you can make a percentage off. Doesn't matter, you can make it like really big, especially in the beginning. It's just important to get sales and to get reviews. Everything else doesn't matter that much. Even if you just make like 10 cents profit, who cares? It's still profit and you got a sale and maybe even a potential review. So you type in whatever you want up here. And then ideally you make your sale one day long because if there are only a few hours left, it gets pushed the most and it's the easiest noticeable. So for that, you click here and then you just pick a day and then you pick the same day when the sale ends. Like this, it's 24 hours long and you can schedule sales. So I usually schedule my sales for the week, always one day long, um, so that I have the best chance of getting noticed. All right, and then down here, you just choose a name. So let's say test sale, continue. Then you can select particular listings if you want, or you just run all listings. Then you review and confirm, and then that's it. But I'll go back here because I already have a sale running. I don't need that right now. And now let's have a brief look into my finances here, payment account, so I can show you what I actually earned. And don't <laughs> get a shock right now. Uh, I'll have to say something to this. So if you look here, nothing, I've earned nothing here. And if you go down here for May, three bucks. And in total, I lost 22 euros. But there's a reason for that. Because I have been running ads, um, you see here, 
I've spent 47 euros on ads because I wanted to give my shop a small boost. I wanted to get a few sales and reviews so it looks better, but I would not recommend running ads after having done this now in the beginning. So without ads and without the money that ads brought me, I would have made around 25 to 30 euros within the last a little bit more than a month that I've had my Etsy shop. So like I said, it's definitely potential for an income stream. You will not get rich overnight. You will not earn hundreds and hundreds of dollars. You potentially earn more than I did if you pick a better niche, if you do it better, if you follow this tutorial. Uh, yeah, but don't get crazy. Don't expect thousands of dollars. But there's potential for a small income stream that you can build up over time. So these are my results as a complete beginner. And I hope that did not discourage, but rather encourage you. Money doesn't just fall into your lap when you sit there and do nothing. But this proves and shows that if you put in the work and the effort, you can start making an income from this. Of course, the income stream starts small, but you can keep building it up over time. I will not tell you that you get rich overnight like all of these gurus claiming that you can make thousands and thousands. Sure, that may be good for clicks, but it is not realistic. What is realistic is that you build up this small income stream. And I think that's awesome. If you want to learn about more ways how you can make money with AI, I recommend that you check out my playlist right over there, where I talk about KDP and stock photography and things like that.